beginning a little bit with Bada about how to tell which deity a planet's representing. And then there's various other ways to tell what the planet, what kind of deity it's representing. Once we figure out what the deity it is representing, then we start looking at the mantras correlated to that deity. And they have different syllables and different names. And, and once you start learning a little bit about the mantra Shastra, you actually begin to be able to um, make mantras in the way of adding an extra bija in to give yourself the number of akshars or, or subtracting an om out or sub, just little changes, not creating a whole new mantra or just there's ways where you can take a deity's name for example like the uh, Bhuvaneshwari if we just needed a mantra Bhuvaneshwari we could just say Harim Bhuvaneshwari Harim Harim Durga Harim very simple, so, but how do we know whether to say cream or cream or all these kind of things? So it's, it's a long process to understand, but the first thing to do is we understand the letters. Mm -hmm. And then we start understanding, we, now we know how to say the letters. Then we start understanding what the letters are meaning. <laughs> and once those <clears throat> letters start going together, the, the tantras say you can break down each letter into its individual meaning. And that'll give you a certain meaning. And then when you put those letters together, that'll give you a different meaning. And so when you understand both of them, and then you put it with the deity's name, you're getting certain results. Mm. Okay, so we got to understand what the letters mean. We understand how to say them now, where they're coming from on a physical level. Now, what are they representing on a etheric level? Okay, so we're getting into the mantra Shastra really through a nice, long, progressive, healthy manner, is my thought. So, our first sound is ah. And now, in here, in page 406 of Vedic Remedies, these, I'm pretty sure these, the mystical meaning is coming from uh, Achuta. These are Achuta's... Uh, what Achuta says about the letter through the filter of Guruji. So he might be giving a little bit more, giving a little bit less, depending on what he felt was right. But Achuta talks very heavily about the letters. Very, very heavily. And Achuta goes to the point of saying it's that letter, that sound that created you. In the same way that that sound will create the deity. That sound will purify a planet, or it will strengthen a planet, or it will destroy a planet. Mm. That sound, in, from the concept of Tantra, my uh, Sanskrit guru, he said to me, he said, the letters are matrikas, little mothers. Tantrics don't worship statues. They worship letters. The statue is a material form where the sound is an energetic vibration that's representing that deity, that energy that you're worshipping, that you're calling, that you're invoking, that you're working with. Mm. Sound. So, ah uh, is Raksha Bija. Raksha means protection. Sometimes at the end of a mantra, for example, it's even Hanuman, Raksha, Raksha. It means Hanuman, protect me. Raksha Raksha is added at the end of protective mantras. So ah uh, in itself is, is Raksha. It gives protection. It's imperishable. It shows the unity of mind and soul, and it symbolizes the omniscient Brahma, omniscient, that which sees all. And it starts the the Om. Om. Because Om is composed of A, U, and, and Anuswar. So for the tape, for the recording, we're yeah. looking at page 406 in mm -hmm. Vedic Remedies and Astrology. So our next letter is AH, uh, that two, two mantra, AH. Uh, and it represents the supreme power, brilliance, creator of Vag Devi, meaning it enhances speech. And relatively speaking, the AH uh, is your, your Vishnu sound. It's called the unbroken sound, the achuta. So it's a very pure, it's one of, it's the most sattvic sound. 
something? Yes. You said it's, I mean, it says here omniscient Brahma, mm -hmm. and you just said Vishnu. How do you keep all this straight? I mean, it says here Brahma, and you say, <laughs> I mean, what's it? At the level of, of Brahma, you see, this ah is Brahmakshar. Brahmakshar means the sound of Brahma. It's connected to Brahma, it's connected to creative energy at the level of all the vowels are ruled by the sun. The sun represents the charkarkas. What do the charkarkas represent inside of us? They represent the atma inside of people. So the sun is the, the atma. So it's the charkarkas are the atma inside of people. So the ah is the creation of the atma. Where if we look at ka, it's our first consonant. And the consonants are ruled by the material planets. So it's showing the physical creation. So ka is also brahmakshara. But it shows the physical creation, where a shows the atma creation. So at the level of the atma, it's a very creative sound. At the level of the physical reality, it becomes a very sattvic sustaining sound. Because what sustains the physical body? The atma. The atma. Okay. Without our atma, we don't have a body. There's nothing to sustain the body. The atma, when the atma wants to leave the body, the body dies. The body and the mind can't go on without the atma. So at that level, it's, it's Vishnu. So for the material creation, it's sustaining. Okay. At the level of the atma, it's Brahmakshara. It's creating all atmas. Okay. So different levels. Okay. And all the sounds are like that. They're very deep in this way. Different levels, different meanings. As long as we start understanding them, it'll all slowly come. There's, you'll never be done learning about the, the meanings of the letters in Sanskrit. It's too many books. It's not possible. So, but if we get a little understanding, then we're, we're going a long way. So our next sound is E. And here Guruji says, it bestows nectar, imparts knowledge. It's stambak. Stambak <coughs> means to stop. And so it's used to, here he says, stop evils. It's used in the yogic sense to stop the mind. Armed for eradicating black magic. So it removes black magic. It removes negative tendencies. Negative tendencies are generally coming from the mind anyway, whether it's yourself or, or others. So that E is the Devi Bija. With that sound, the, the, the goddess is with you. Both. Our next sound is oo. And here, the seed of Uchatan bestows supreme power to attain any desire, symbolizes omnipresent Vishnu and the middle of the pranava. Uchatan, repelling. If someone's bothering you and you want to repel them, if you want to get rid of something, Vaishikarana is generally infatuation and attraction. Like love mantras to make someone fall in love with you, that's uh, Vaishikarana. If you want the, the Devi to come down and visit you, you do a Vaishikarana mantra of the Devi. You're trying to bring, attract. It's, a, it's an attractive energy. But Uchitan is more repelling, pushing away. If you, you want a roommate to leave, you do Uchitan. You put an Uchitan mantra underneath their bed and they'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you want somebody to move like you don't like your neighbor, you put the, the mantra underneath their house. The yantra and the Uchitan mantra underneath their house. And they'll you move. write it on a piece of paper and stick that on, on a yantra at copper and you do the... Yeah. But that's, that's the type of... That's Uchitan. It's, it's repelling. It makes things go away. U is generally... It removes, it suppresses, it gets rid of. Got it. So when we... Um, if you think of it, have you heard the mantra hung fa? Yeah. Hung, hu, it's, it's H U. It's ooh, it's, it's removing. Oh. You're, you're throwing out. In the, the bija for Durga, doom, it's an ooh. It's, it's removing. Ooh. So anytime in that bija there's an ooh there, it's removing, it's repelling, it's pushing down, it's, it's getting rid of. So here we have. Uh, and it says bestows mantra city as it refers to the rishi 
success in all good and righteous works. So, if you do, you can feel it really awaken your spine. It's a very bright, shining, fiery energy. Ring. Well, not ring. It's oh. not. <laughs> That's with an R. Oh. Um, Rishi, Rishi, oh, Rishi, Brispati. Oh, Brispati. 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 Oh, it's different. Bring, bring, bring. For Brispati, it's bring, bring, bring. Got it. You're getting the br there in, in, in awakening the Agni of Brispati. Then we have rr, rr, rr. It's, an, it's a rolling L. Preaches truth, inventor of speech, calls of the origin of Lakshmi Bija responsible for salvation. And so you'll see that this is really not used too much in traditional Sanskrit, but it's used very heavily in, in Tantra, in mantras and, and nyasas. Nyasas are putting mantras on you and inside of you and things of that nature. Is this, is this a used, a commonly used practice in India? What? These tantric spells and uses of mantras like in politics and stuff like that oh heavily used really? it's used in politics so much yeah wow so so every good politician has his tantrika there oh definitely or <laughs> two or three just to make sure in case the one isn't it messes up <laughs> yeah the, there's politicians that just have certain brahmins that they just they give them a house and and pay for everything they need and all that brahmin does is sit all day doing mantras for the politician wow definitely and don't think that George Bush and Arnold Schwarzenegger are, don't have Brahmins doing things for them as well. <laughs> so the Gandhis must have had some powerful black magic. Oh, definitely. And, and they all got killed. They all assassinated. Yeah, and, and if you... Um, some stronger ones. I only know... I don't want this recorded, but... Yeah. Yeah. I know this is a naive question, isn't this kind of bad karma? Terribly bad. <laughs> okay. I, there's one guy that I actually want to study with in, in Bhubaneswar. Mm -hmm. And he used to be a tantric for one of the politicians mm -hmm. in Orissa. And Guruji said to him, he said, you know that you're accruing so much of the percentage, I don't know whether it was, it was either 60 or 40 percent of all this that this politician is doing and getting, you're accruing from being his astrologer and tantric, you're, you know, even though you're offering him the results, you're still getting a percentage of this karma. And uh, the guy's a sannyas now. <laughs> he doesn't do any politics. It just seems like common sense. If, you, if you're that high, uh, uh, that, that power, position... Power and money. <coughs> corrupt. He's getting 60% of the karma without getting 60% of the money, yeah? Well, I'm sure he got plenty of money. Yeah. I'm sure he was taken care of well. So, do you think that Rajiv and, and Indra, Indira, would I know have, for would I even better tantricas? Yeah, good. There, there's all kinds of stories about uh, Indira Gandhi. There's so many stories. Then there's your karma, your chart, and how could we all know that there's so many things to look at, and even the best of astrologers will miss things. So if you have your tantric working on your Mars and they just happen to miss that transit of Saturn 10th from Aruta Lagna, the politician's still going to fall. But any which way, we're not using it for anything like that. We're using it for good internal type of stuff. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Um, I remember Sarbani was teaching a little bit about this at the conference about the different types of Tantra that are done. And I remember, I found it very strange, Willa started getting very squeamish. And she says, why do we need to talk about this bad stuff? Because it happens. And on one level, what is black magic? What is a curse? A curse, if somebody stole something from me, and I got so angry, and I'd been just meditating for the last doing a, a meditation sadhana for the last three months that it was supposed to be done in two days and somebody stole something from me and I got so angry at them, all that energy from all that sadhana would go right into cursing them. I don't even have to say you're cursed, I just have to get angry at them. And that anger enough is enough to imprint their karmic field. 
Now, if it's some bum on the street that gets angry at you who's half crazy anyway, it's not going to imprint you too bad. The more shakti, the more power a person has, the worse the curse is on you for you making them angry. So a curse is just, if that's a curse, then black magic, you know, people give each other the, the finger driving down the road. If we think about the middle finger, it's connected to Saturn. They're basically saying, Saturn on your head. <laughs> that's at, at some level, you know, we don't consider that black magic. But that is them putting out negative intention for negativity to come to you. And if they said it with the, um, like there are certain ways that you can look at a chart and you just know the sounds that will totally destroy a person. Mm. Like I remember when George Bush was running for his second term, people, somebody uh, had posted something about what tantra can we do to make him not win? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, I looked at his chart and was like, we could do, and then I just, I wrote this whole thing about <laughs> like what mantras and slogans and, and just, just things that you could say that no one would think is a mantra, but just by the sound alone would cause him great, would destroy his image. And then I, I couldn't send it. I was like, I can't, I can't deal with that karma. I had to just delete it. <laughs> Somebody must have done it because his image is pretty tattered. Uh, but he got, he got reelected. So in this way, if we understand the letters, we can understand right. at the same way that destroys him, other sounds will uplift him. And when we understand the sounds that uplift us or put us down, then... And so we want to remove... Uh, so that was for his, his Aruta Lagna. Now, if we looked at his A6 and we were working for him, we want in all his slogans to be the sounds that destroy his enemy so that he does win. Now, for us, how we're going to use this mm -hmm. is we're focused more on our negative tendencies. Somebody who's an alcoholic. How do we destroy their Saturn? Mm. Somebody who's having problems with their wife, how do we remove the malefics from their Upapada Lagna? So this is how we're using it. We're using it in a much more sattvic way. We're using it for sattvic purposes. If someone's having afflictions in the workplace, how do we remove those afflictions? They're not getting along with somebody in the workplace. How do we smooth those things out? So this is how we're using this. It can be used on many, many levels. And, and that's still an external level. All these can be used totally inside for our own personal inner growth to improve our good qualities and destroy our bad qualities. So we're on I... Saraswati Bija. So this is the Bija for Saraswati, this sound. It's the origin of Jala Bija, the seed of water, the giver of Vidya, of knowledge, and Siddhi, success and good actions. It ends enmity and court cases and establishes justice. Ai. Ai. So, Saraswati's Bija is All these, when we use as mantras, we add the Anuswar at the end. I know somebody who's having a lot of problems with court cases. Uh -huh. Would I just tell them to say that? This is the nice way to, to get over court cases. To say, I... Because this increases you and your ability to defend yourself and to, to show your... to prove your correctness. It can... So are you Mesha? Manisha. Manisha. Yes. Okay, Come so it was Manisha. Manisha. Oh. Somebody just pass her some pillows. Court cases. Now, there's other ways where you destroy the person who you're going to court with, but Aing, this is Saraswati Bija. It's the worship of Saraswati. It shows justice and knowledge. Because if the truth is known, if the person is in the right, if the truth is known, then they go free. So, so, this, so this ensures that, that they can communicate and get that across what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for that situation, we use this in court cases. In other situations where there's no clear right or wrong, then there's other things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you could just generally say, generally just say, I, 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 
Mm, you gotta add the anaswar at the end. I, yeah. and, and meditate on that as a bija. This, this is our opening. We start always with a little Sanskrit. So. And then we have O. And O, sublime, worship of Vishnu and Lakshmi, youthful, used for other bija with specific objective of attainment. Then we have Ao, powerful marana, destruction, and uchitan, bija, bestows auspicious results quickly. So marana means destroying. It just totally removes it. So I just wanted to go over the, the vows today. We'll go over the consonants through Guruji's book next week. There was few things. This is from Varda Tantra. I have Varda Tantra here and Sarda Tantra. Sarda means Saraswati. Uh, what is Varda? What's the word? Varada. It's a name of Agni. It means granting wishes, conferring a boon, ready to fulfill requests or answer prayers. And I just this right here just talks a little bit about the bijas. And then from Sarada Tantra I just wanted to go over some Dorga mantras because we're going to slowly need to develop a repertoire of, of mantras that we can prescribe to people. And if we do it slowly, then we and begin to understand the mantras and practice them a little bit. And you don't have to do them all the time, but if you practice them a little bit, then when it comes time to prescribe, the, the mantra is comfortable with you. Um, Sarada is what, Devi? Sarada. Saraswati. Oh, Saraswati. Okay. It's a, a more tamasic form. Oh, of Saraswati. You have rajas, you have sattvic, even though Saraswati in and of herself is a rajasic form of the Devi, even when she takes form, then her form, she can have a rajasic form, a sattvic form, and a tamasic form. Mm. And is that true of all the devas, the yeah. beauties? Yeah, definitely. What would her sattvic form be? Her sattvic form, I know she's wearing white and oh, this and that. And, I see. Yeah. It's not a name. She, uh, she's like, the name so it's like Neela uh, Saraswati the name is who you want it to look I see these go. questions off the top of my head Sarda Devi is the Samhara form Samhara means destroying so mm -hmm. that's uh, the stiti form. That's the maintenance form. Uh, Vishwa Palini. That's Vishwa the Palini. Palini. She who protects everything. <laughs> Mantra Mahodadi. Welcome. Okay, so this is the uh, Mantrartha Bidanam from the Varda Tantra. And I just wanted to read a little bit, because the more we get this in us, the better we'll become with remedies. So, Sri Shri Shiva said, Listen, O Parmeshwari, now I shall describe to you the meaning of mantras, in the absence of knowledge of which no one can get the fruit of even with a million sadhanas. O Parvati, this is just saying that without the meaning, you're not going to get as much effect. And some people say only with Vedic mantras, you do, or more long stotra type mantras, do you need to know the meaning, where each word is actually having a meaning. And some people say that the tantric mantras, it's just the sound, so it doesn't matter if you know or not. But so that's what some people say, but if you look at the text, the texts are always saying you have to know what the beaches mean to really get the result. And it's not that you won't get zero result if you don't know, it's just you're going to be getting 60% of the result if you don't know. Where if you know, and if you do everything right, you've got to do everything right to get the 100%. And one of those things to make everything right is to know 
So, O Parvati, first of all, listen to the meaning of the Prasada Mantra. Ha denotes Shiva. And Au denotes Sada Shiva. And the Anuswar at the end represents Dukkha Hara. Dukkha Hara, Dukkha is suffering, Hara is destroying. So the Anuswar at the end destroys suffering. So it's Shiva, Sada Shiva, and Dukkha Hara, destroying suffering. This home is the Bija for the worship of Shiva. Da indicates Dorga. U indicates Rakshana, protection. The Nada Rupa, the Anuswar at the end, is Vishwamata, the mother of everything. And the Bindu is Kurva, the servant, the attendant. Thus, Dung is the Bija for the worship of Dorga. And it's a long Dung. Is the, is the bija for the worship of Dorga. And so each sound, how they're breaking it down to give a meaning. <coughs> Ka indicates Kali. Ra indicates Brahma. E denotes Mahamaya. The Nada, the Anuswar at the end, denotes Vishwamata, and the Bindu indicates Dukahara. Vishwamata is the mother of everything. Dukahara is destroying all suffering. Now notice that the Anuswar at the end wasn't destroying all suffering. Did everybody... So, so it's meaning different things in different... depending on how the combination goes together. It changes certain meanings. They all have multiple meanings and it'll change. Thus made up of these letters, cream is the bija for the worship of Kalika Devi, for getting relief from afflictions and pain. Cream. Hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna just skip through, read the a few lines at the end of this chapter. Wherever the same bija is used twice, their meaning should be considered different. Thus, knowing the meaning of the mantra, one should satisfy themselves. One should use the mantras for the purpose of japa, only after knowing both of their meanings. Both of their meanings. So it's saying you should know the superficial meaning. And then you should also know, breaking down each letter, what's happening. That that anuswar at the end is destroying, removing the suffering. 